Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this video, I'm going to be doing a lab that I do with my grade 11 physics class, and it has to do with Newton's second law. There's two parts to this lab, and if you want a copy of the actual handout I give to my students, you can find that for free in the description. Alright, so the first part of the lab is to see how net force affects acceleration. So when I say that, what I mean is, how is one proportional to the other? If I were to double net force, what happens to acceleration? Does it double? Does it quadruple? Or does it reduce to, say, a half or a quarter? And that's what we're going to find out. And this is how we're going to do that. So this is a motion sensor. It is going to measure the motion of the cart and plot um, dt and vt graphs. From the slope of the vt graph, we can get acceleration. Then what I have is this track, which is fairly frictionless. We want to try and reduce friction as much as possible because we're not going to be considering it in this experiment. Then the cart itself has a mass of 260 grams. And then you can see I've added other masses to it. And then what I will do is it is attached to this string, which is attached to another mass that hangs over the edge of the table, like so. And so what I have, when I let go, the cart is going to accelerate down the track. Not only does the cart accelerate down the track, but the mass accelerates down. And they accelerate at the same rate because they're connected by the string. So, the total mass that is being accelerated is the mass of the cart plus the hanging mass down over here. Now, the force that is causing that acceleration is the hanging mass. Gravity is acting on the hanging mass, and therefore the force of gravity on that hanging mass is causing all of the masses to accelerate. So, what we're going to do to figure out how this net force, which is the force of gravity on the hanging mass, affects the acceleration of all the masses, is we're going to have to keep total mass constant as I change the force of gravity. So how I'm going to do that is, when I add more masses to the hanging mass, I'm going to take them from the cart. So as I take them from the cart and add them to the hanging mass, I'm changing the net force, I'm increasing the force of gravity, but keeping the total mass of the system constant. And then we can measure to see what happens with acceleration. So here's what we're starting with. We have the mass of the cart, which is 260 grams. Then we have one kilogram here, and then a total of another 500 grams. And the hanging mass is currently 100 grams. So you can figure out what that total mass is. And we're going to start with the hanging mass of this 100 grams, or 0.1 kilograms. So that's a force of 0.98 newtons. And then we're going to measure its acceleration. And then what you can do is you can create a graph of net force versus acceleration and see what that graph looks like. Is it a linear relationship, a quadratic relationship? or maybe an inverse relationship, and you'll have your answer. So let's start with 100 grams. So you can see here, our acceleration is 0.46198 meters per second squared. Now 200 grams. So here, our acceleration is 
0.96031 meters per second squared. Now we have 300 grams on the hanging mass. Acceleration is starting to pick up there. <laughs> So here, our acceleration is 1.4288 meters per second squared. Now 400 grams on the hanging mass. So now our acceleration is 1.9671 meters per second squared. And finally, 500 grams on the hanging mass. So now our acceleration is 2.4754 meters per second squared. All right, so that's it for part one. All right, so for part two of the lab, we're going to see how mass affects acceleration. And how we're going to do that is by keeping the net force constant. So the hanging mass will always be 100 grams, meaning the net force will always be 0.98 newtons. And that will never change. What will change is I will start with our 260 gram cart and then I'll add 500 grams. And then I will add another 500 grams and so on and so on to see how that affects acceleration. So if I double the mass, does that double acceleration, quadruple acceleration, halve acceleration, or a quarter acceleration, or something else? So we're gonna create a chart or you can use the one in the handout in the description. And then you can plot a graph of acceleration versus mass to see if that relationship would be an inverse or linear, quadratic, whatever. So we're going to start with just our 260 gram cart. So here our acceleration is 2.4737 meters per second squared. Now we add 500 grams. So here are our acceleration is 1.0488 meters per second squared. Now we add another 500 grams, so that's a total of one kilogram added to the 260 gram cart. So remember the total mass that's being accelerated is 260 grams plus a kilogram plus our 100 gram mass. That's the mass of the system that's being accelerated. So here our acceleration is 0.59481 meters per second squared. Next, add another 500 grams. So here our acceleration is 0.46843 meters per second squared. Next, add another 500 grams. So now our acceleration is 0.36679. And one last time, add another 500 grams. And 
And now our acceleration is 0 0.30456 meters per second squared. All right, so that's it for that video. Let me know in the comments the relationship between acceleration and net force from part one and acceleration and mass from part two. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any other laps.